Good morning and welcome to St Catherine's for this service of British Book of Common Prayer Holy Communion. Uh, my name is Tim Carter, I'm the vicar here at St Catherine's and at All Saints in Wellington. I'm going to be uh, leading the service this morning and preaching. It's really good to uh, be able to gather together th like this, however much online it is. Um, we're still working out the implications of the new roadmap for opening things up and how that's going to apply to, to churches, so please do bear with us on that and, and pray for us about that as we make decisions in the coming months. If this is your first time with us at St Catherine's, it's particularly good to have you with us. Uh, do email me, tim at allsaints-wellington.org, uh, to introduce yourself and say hello, or say hello in the comment stream on, on the video on YouTube. That would be lovely. As I said, this morning is a service of Holy Communion, so if you would like to have bread or wine or something similar to eat and drink at that point in the service, you're very welcome to do that. As we come to worship God, a moment of quiet to gather our thoughts. And we begin by praying the Colic for Purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour, and do all that thou hast to do. For the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them, in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. 
we humbly beseech thee to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth thy servant, our Queen and Governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works she may ever seek thy honour and thy glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for the Second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in declaring our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son together, is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Rosemary is going to read our Bible reading for us. Hello, I'm reading from Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Jesus predicts his death. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. And after three days, rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory and with his holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rosemary, for reading that for us. As we come to reflect on our scripture this morning, let's pray together. As we gather around the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, Jesus says some really uncomfortable things. 
And this morning's reading from Mark's eyewitness account of Jesus' life has to contain some of not just uncomfortable, but really difficult things that Jesus says. Um, and we're almost exactly halfway through Mark's book. And this is, it's like a turning point. Up until now, through Mark's book, we've seen Jesus teaching and healing and performing miracle. Uh, but now there's a switch in direction, a change in emphasis, and it comes in three episodes. The first episode is in the passage just before the one we read this morning. Uh, Jesus has a conversation with his friends and asks who the people are saying he is. And some people say John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets. But Peter says, declares, you are the Messiah. That is, you are God's chosen one, uh, the one sent to save God's people. And the next section describes a journey up a mountain that Jesus took with three of his closest friends. And at the top of the mountain, Jesus meets with Moses and Elijah and something that happens that makes him shine, shine like a star. And a voice from heaven speaks over him and says, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. So this turning point in the whole story of Jesus um, is begun and ended, almost bookended by these two declarations, one from earth and one from heaven about who Jesus is. Jesus is God's chosen one, sent to save the world. Jesus is God's son, loved by God and given authority to speak on God's behalf. And I think that's important to remember as we look in more detail at what Jesus says in the section we're looking, focusing on this morning, this middle section. The one speaking to us is God's son, chosen by God to save us and God has told us to listen to him. So however difficult it is, we really do have to grapple with this stuff. Because what Jesus says is absolutely shocking. His friends and his followers, were, they were just completely dumbfounded by it. Um, it's new teaching that Jesus has started to share with them. Uh, he starts telling them that, that part of the rescue plan for which he's been chosen is that he has to die. Uh, more than that, he has to be rejected by all the religious leaders. Then he has to die, and then he will return to life. Now, for those of us who've been Christians for some time, who are familiar with this story, it can be difficult to recapture that sense of shock. But I wonder, I wonder if you can recall the first time you heard it. I wonder if you can imagine what it'd been like to hear it for the first time. Not just the first time in your life, but the first time it had ever been said. The teacher that you've left home and family to follow around suddenly starts talking about death and suffering. And one of his closest friends, one of his closest followers, Peter, is so shocked by it, he starts telling him off. But Jesus is not having it. Get behind me, Satan. Jesus says, Jesus won't be deflected from the path that God has set before him, however hard it's going to be to walk. But that's not it. The shocks just keep on coming for the disciples. Not only does Jesus start talking about his own suffering and death, he starts saying that his followers are going to suffer and die as well. In fact, he says that if they don't choose to suffer and to die, then they can't be rescued. Now, this is the first mention of the cross in Mark's narrative. And it's not Jesus talking about himself. It's Jesus talking about us. It's Again, it's so difficult to get the depth of the outrage and shock that his friends would have heard hearing this for the first time. The cross was a punishment of shame, of, of great pain, of degradation, of torture. The only people who took up a cross were those who were cursed by God and committed to the worst of deaths. You see, sometimes we talk about, oh, we've got our cross to bear. But Jesus isn't talking about the perseverance needed to put up with the kind of annoyances and trials of life. He's talking about the deliberate choice to do things that are going to bring us pain, suffering and shame. 
and to choose to do them because they're the things that God is calling us to do, to take up our cross. I described these as uncomfortable words earlier. Surely it's more than uncomfortable. It's really challenging. But they're not purposeless or illogical. They might challenge our value systems, how we see the world. But once we shift our perspective, they make complete sense. Actually, I don't think we have to shift our perspective very far. If I offered you one million pounds in return for permission to take your life, who would take me up on the deal? If I said, here's a million pounds, but you've got to let me kill you, would you take me up on the deal? No. As Jesus says, what does it profit you to gain the whole world and yet forfeit your life? This is the logical foundation of Jesus' teaching. If we take the long view of our life, then we have a choice. And the choice is basically about whether we trust Jesus with our long-term future. He says that our lives can be saved, that we can live with him forever. But for that to happen, we have to trust him and give up the things that he tells us to give up. If we try and hold on to things or to save our own lives, then we're going to die. And so the question is, do we trust him enough to let go, to sacrifice, to take up our cross? And it seems to me that this question of trust brings us back to the person who's asking us to trust them. Let's do another bit of imagination. Imagine you're 16 and you've shown some talent for running. You're taking part in an in a inter-school competition, perhaps a county competition, uh, and you've just run your, won your race. And you're approached afterwards by someone who says that she thinks you could be really good, that you have the potential to be Olympic standard, and she'd like to offer you to coach you. And she gives you a four-year plan uh, with the hours of training and the work involved. Um, and it will mean sacrificing a normal life for a young person. No late nights, no lions, full-on dedication. As you're weighing this up, it occurs to you to ask the coach what experience she has, who she trains already, what success she's had with other athletes. What kind of answer is going to make you more likely to be willing to make those sacrifices? Surely answers that demonstrate that she does actually know what she's talking about, that she can deliver on what she's promising. So who is speaking to us about taking up our cross? The one speaking to us is God's son, chosen by God to save us, and God has told us to listen to him. More than this, it's he who's shown us the way of the cross by walking himself taking the worst of it himself, as we remember when we're going to come to communion later, and proving that it leads to resurrection. Jesus really knows what he's talking about. So what does it mean for us today? We don't live in Roman-occupied Palestine. Crucifixion no longer happens in our country. But what aspects of painful, shameful, suffering are we being called to take up in our lives? Perhaps it's to do with our money. If a stranger were to look at our bank statements, would they see evidence of our sacrificial giving that echoes the generosity of God to us? Is what we would like to spend our money on constrained by our decision to give our money away? Do we ever feel embarrassed about our clothes, our car, our house, our garden, because we can't spend as much on it as our neighbours, because we've given our money away? Maybe it's in the area of relationships. Is there a relative that we find particularly difficult, or who has hurt us, that God is asking us to forgive and to love? Are we finding it painful to be married? or to be faithful in a difficult marriage? How do we deal with the shameful situations when we know that we've done something wrong and need to ask forgiveness from someone else? And what about control and power? Can we choose to show grace and hope 
when we feel like we're losing control over areas of our life? Are we willing to give up control so that other people have opportunities to grow and to be fruitful? Will we choose to give up status and influence so that others may share in leadership? I don't know exactly what the Holy Spirit is working in your heart at the moment. It might be in these areas, and it might be in other areas. I do know that the Holy Spirit points out different things to different people at different points of their Christian life. And that process is never really complete until we reach home. I know that I'm challenged by these questions. They're not easy ones to engage with. And having them brought up like this can be a bit like having a bucket of cold water thrown over us. I'm pretty sure that's how Jesus' friends felt when he first said it to them. In the end, however, they saw Jesus raised from the dead, as he said he would be, and trusted him enough to follow the way of the cross, knowing that it leads to resurrection. Are we willing to do the same? Amen. As we continue to reflect on those words of Jesus and to respond to them, we're going to sing together, O oh Jesus, I have promised. Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. Let me feel thee near me, the world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer, and shield my soul from sin. Let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still. Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self will. Or speak to reassure me, to hasten or control. Or speak and make me listen, thou guardian of my soul. O Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory, there thou thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master. plant my own. My hope to follow duly is in thy strength alone. Oh, guide me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in hand receive me, my Saviour and my friend. And so we come to our time of prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, 
beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to the, all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do earnestly and truly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy words. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hear, ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these most holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory 
world without end. Amen. And we praise God in the words of the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the law, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. It has been really good to worship with you this morning. Uh, Do have a great week, and I hope to see you again on stream next week. If there's anything that's come up for you this week that you'd like to ask about or ask prayer for, or if there's anything practical we can do to support you in your life, do email me tim at allsaints-wellington.org. Apart from that, goodbye and God bless.